Mathieu Carré Coup, French pronunciation, Ma .tjok, e, coup, the 2nd of September 1933 to the 14th of October 2015, was a Beninese politician who served as president of Benin from 1972 to 1991 and again from 1996 to 2006. After seizing power in a military coup, he ruled the country for 19 years, for most of that time under an officially Marxist-Leninist ideology, before he was stripped of his powers by the National Conference of 1990. He was defeated in the 1991 presidential election but was returned to the presidency in the 1996 election and controversially re-elected in 2001. Topic. Military background Kareku was born in 1933 in Coorfa village, in northwest French Dahomey. After having studied at military schools in modern-day Mali and Senegal, Kareku served in the military by joining the French army in 1960. Following independence, from 1961 to 1963 he was an aide-de-camp to Dahomeyan President Hubert Maga. Following Maurice Kawanete's coup d'état in December 1967, Kareku, who was his cousin, was made chairman of the Military Revolutionary Council. After Kareku attended French military schools from 1968 to 1970, Maga made him a major, deputy chief of staff, and commander of the Wida paratroop unit. 1972–1973 Kareku seized power in Dahomey in a military coup on 26 October 1972, ending a system of government in which three members of a presidential council were to rotate power. Earlier in the year, Maga had handed over power to Justin Ahomadebe. During his first two years in power, Kareku expressed only nationalism and said that the country's revolution would not burden itself by copying foreign ideology. We do not want communism or capitalism or socialism. We have our own Dahomeyan social and cultural system." On 30 November 1974, however, he announced the adoption of Marxism-Leninism by the state. The country was renamed from the Republic of Dahomey to the People's Republic of Benin a year later. The banks and petroleum industry were nationalized. The People's Revolutionary Party of Benin Parti de la Revolution Populaire du Benin PRPB, was established as the sole ruling party. In 1980, Kareku was elected president by the Revolutionary National Assembly. He retired from the army in 1987. It has been suggested that Kareku's move to Marxism Leninism was motivated mainly by pragmatic considerations, and that Kareku himself was not actually a leftist radical. The new ideology offered a means of legitimization, a way of distinguishing the new regime from those that had preceded it, and was based on broader unifying principles than the politics of ethnicity. Kareku's regime initially included officers from both the north and south of the country, but as the years passed the northerners like Kareku himself became clearly dominant, undermining the idea that the regime was not based in ethnicity. By officially adopting Marxism-Leninism, Kareku may also have wanted to win the support of the country's leftists. Kareku's regime was rigid and vigorous in pursuing its newly adopted ideological goals from the mid-1970s to the late 1970s. Beginning in the late 1970s, the regime jettisoned much of its radicalism and settled onto a more moderately socialist course as Kareku consolidated his personal control. Kareku survived numerous attempts to oust him, including an invasion of the port city of Kotanu by mercenaries contracted by a group of exiled Beninese political rivals in January 1977, as well as two coup attempts in 1988. It was hoped that the nationalizations of the 1970s would help develop the economy, but it remained in a very poor condition, with the state sector being plagued by inefficiency and corruption. Kareku began reversing course in the early 1980s, closing down numerous state-run companies and attempting to attract foreign investment. He also accepted an IMF structural readjustment program in 1989, agreeing to austerity measures that severely cut state expenditure. The economic situation continued to worsen during the 1980s, provoking widespread unrest in 1989. A student strike began in January of that year. Subsequently, strikes among various elements of society increased in frequency and the nature of their demands grew broader. Whereas initially they had focused on economic issues such as salary arrears, this progressed to include demands for political reform. Topic: <laughs> Transition to democracy. 
In the period of reforms towards multi-party democracy in Africa at the beginning of the 1990s, Benin moved onto this path early, with Kereku being forced to make concessions to popular discontent. Benin's early and relatively smooth transition may be attributed to the particularly dismal economic situation in the country, which seemed to preclude any alternative. In the midst of increasing unrest, Kereku was re-elected as president by the National Assembly in August 1989, but in December 1989 Marxism-Leninism was dropped as the state ideology, and a national conference was held in February 1990. The conference turned out to be hostile to Kereku and declared its own sovereignty. Despite the objections of some of his officers to this turn of events, Kereku did not act against the conference, although he labeled the conference's declaration of sovereignty a civilian coup. During the transition that followed, Kereku remained president but lost most of his power. During the 1990 National Conference, which was nationally televised, Kereku spoke to the Archbishop of Kotanu, Isidore de Souza, confessing guilt and begging forgiveness for the flaws of his regime. An observer described it as a remarkable piece of political theater, full of cultural symbolism and significance. In effect, Kereku was seeking forgiveness from his people. Such a gesture, so unusual for the African autocrats of the time, could have fatally weakened Kereku's political standing, but he performed the gesture in such a way that, far from ending his political career, it instead served to symbolically redeem him and facilitate his political rehabilitation, while also securing him immunity from prosecution. Kereku shrewdly utilized the timing and setting. Culturally as well as theologically it was impossible to refuse forgiveness on these terms. World Bank economist Nisifor Soglo, chosen as Prime Minister by the conference, took office in March, and a new constitution was approved in a December 1990 referendum. Multi-party elections were held in March 1991, which Kereku lost, obtaining only about 32% of the vote in the second round against Prime Minister Soglo, while he won very large vote percentages in the north, in the rest of the country he found little support. Kereku was thus the first mainland African president to lose power through a popular election. He apologized for deplorable and regrettable incidents that occurred during his rule. After losing the election in March 1991, Kereku left the political scene and withdrew to total silence, another move that was interpreted as penitential. 1996 presidential election Kereku reclaimed the presidency in the March 1996 election. Soglo's economic reforms and his alleged dictatorial tendencies had caused his popularity to suffer. Although Kereku received fewer votes than Soglo in the first round, he then defeated Soglo in the second round, taking 52.5% of the vote. Kereku was backed in the second round by third place candidate Adrian Hongbeiji and fourth place candidate Bruno Amusu. As in 1991, Kereku received very strong support from northern voters, but he also improved his performance in the south. Soglo alleged fraud, but this was rejected by the Constitutional Court, which confirmed Kereku's victory. When taking the oath of office, Kereku left out a portion that referred to the spirits of the ancestors because he had become a born-again Christian after his defeat by Soglo. He was subsequently forced to retake the oath including the reference to spirits. Topic. Disputed re-election, 2001 Kereku was re-elected for a second five-year term in the March 2001 presidential election under controversial circumstances. In the first round he took 45.4% of the vote, Soglo, who took second place, and Parliament Speaker Hongbeiji, who took third, both refused to participate in the second round, alleging fraud and saying that they did not want to legitimize the vote by participating in it. This left the fourth-place finisher, Amusu, to face Kereku in the runoff, and Kereku easily won with 83.6% of the vote. It was subsequently discovered that the American corporation Titan gave more than $2 million to Kereku's re election campaign as a bribe. During Kereku's second period in office, his government followed a liberal economic path. The period also saw Benin take part in international peacekeeping missions in other African states. Kereku was barred from running again in 2006 on two counts. The constitution not only limited the president to two terms, but also required that presidential candidates be younger than 70 he turned 70 in 2003, through his second term. 
Kereku said in July 2005 that he would not attempt to amend the constitution to allow him to run for a third term. If you don't leave power, he said, power will leave you. There was, however, speculation that he had wanted it to be changed, but faced too much opposition. On 5 March 2006, voters went to the polls to decide who would succeed Kereku as president of Benin. Yayi Boni defeated Adrian Hongbeji in a runoff vote on 19 March, and Kereku left office at the end of his term, at midnight on 6 April 2006. Religion and symbolism Born and baptized in the Roman Catholic faith, although he was a lapsed adherent, Kereku allegedly converted to Islam in 1980 while on a visit to Libya, and changed his first name to Ahmed, but he later returned to the use of the name Matthew. This alleged conversion may have been designed to please the Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and obtain financial and military support. Alternatively, the conversion story may have been a rumor planted by some of his opponents in order to destabilize his regime. He subsequently became a born-again Christian. Some Vodun believers in Benin regarded him as having magical powers, explaining his ability to survive repeated coup attempts during his military rule, nicknamed the Chameleon. From an early point in his career, Kereku's motto was, The branch will not break in the arms of the Chameleon. The nickname and motto he adopted were full of cultural symbolism, articulating and projecting his power and ability. Unlike some past rulers who had adopted animal symbolism intending to project a violent, warlike sense of power, Kereku's symbolic animal suggested skill and cleverness. His motto suggested that he would keep the branch from breaking, but implicitly warned of what could happen to the branch if it was not in the arms of the chameleon. Political chaos. To some, his nickname seemed particularly apt as he successfully adapted himself to a new political climate and neoliberal economic policies in the 1990s. He used the campaign slogan, Experience in the Service of Youth. Retirement and death After leaving office in 2006, Kereku stayed out of politics and spent time at his homes in Kotanu and Natishingo in northwestern Benin, his native region. He suffered a health crisis in 2014 and was taken to Paris for treatment. Although he recovered, he continued to suffer health problems, and he died in Benin on 14 October 2015 at the age of 82. His death was announced in a statement by President Thomas Boni Yayi. No cause of death was stated. A week of national mourning was declared. References <references>